One of the fascinating things about the Duke of Edinburgh is that he comes from a multinational background. You know, in his blood there is Danish blood, German blood, Russian blood, English blood. He is in some ways, he born in Greece, came to this country, educated in Scotland, joined the Royal Navy. He was both incredibly British, but also at the same time something of an outsider. And I think that gave him a particular strength. He was completely loyal to this country, loyal to the Queen, but he also could observe us and our institutions and our ways. He always was looking at us, I think, in quite intriguing and interesting ways. The Duke of Edinburgh served the United Kingdom matchlessly throughout his lifetime. When he was a young man, he joined the Royal Navy. During the Second World War, he was mentioned in dispatches. Uh, he was going to have a very successful career in the Navy, and I think to everybody's surprise, certainly his, uh, the King, Elizabeth II's father, died younger than was expected. And so Duke of Edinburgh was propelled into a public role sooner than he might have hoped. I once asked the Duke of Edinburgh, I said, when the Queen became Queen, were there people telling you what to do? And he said, no, there were people telling me, keep out. The Queen, we know what the Queen's got to do, you know, just stay out of the way. And I think he found that quite challenging at the beginning, because there wasn't really a settled role for the Duke of Edinburgh, apart from supporting the Queen, which he was quite ready to do. He had to invent a role for himself, and that's what he managed to do very successfully. We, of course, have viewed the Duke of Edinburgh as the person who supported the Queen all these years, literally spent his life walking one step behind her. And for a man of his generation, it's quite unusual to be viewed, really, through the prism of your wife's achievement. The truth is, the Duke of Edinburgh's achievements in his own right uh, were extraordinary. He was a remarkable individual, but he never, ever overstepped the mark. He always knew that his position was one step behind the Queen. Nobody is ever quite normal with the Queen. There's always an invisible moat around the Queen. Nobody treats her as a normal human being. The only person in the world who was really able to do that was the Duke of Edinburgh. And the only woman in the world who could ever say to the Duke of Edinburgh, oh, Philip, do shut up, was the Queen. And she did. I mean, he simply turned up in the right place on the right day, at the right time, wearing the right uniform for 60, 70 years, a lifetime of service. And from the Queen's point of view, knowing that she had somebody there who was totally dependable, totally reliable, and totally funny was a wonderful thing. I remember spending a, a, a day following them as they were going about their official duties. And they'd spent the day in a particular part of the country and they were apart during the day. But at the end of the day, they got into the Royal Limousine and were driven off. And I was in the next car and I followed them for several miles. And I could see the Duke of Edinburgh in the back of the car chatting to the Queen and telling her what he'd been up to during the day and making her laugh like a drain. It was wonderful to see. And they'd been married by then 50, 60 years and they were just very good companions. And she would know that at the end of the day there was always someone to come home to who actually understood what it was all about. The Duke of Edinburgh was a very caring grandfather. There's the story that at the funeral of Diana, Princess of Wales, uh, Prince William, who was then only a young teenage boy, was reluctant to, to walk behind the coffin, quite a traumatic experience. And the Duke of Edinburgh wasn't expected to walk behind the coffin, but he said to Prince William, I think, you know, in years to come, you'll feel you wanted to be at your mother's funeral in this way. Uh, would it be easier if I walk with you? And that's why the Duke of Edinburgh was walking there with Prince William at his side. So I think he was a, a very important figure to his grandsons, uh, William and Harry, and to all his grandchildren. Um, but if you, if you like the style of Prince William, it's in large measure the style that Prince William has inherited from his grandfather as well as his father. Even as an old man, the Duke of Edinburgh was full of energy. But if you'd known him when he was younger, he was a bundle of energy. He was exciting to be with, exhilarating to be with, sometimes frustrating to be with, because he could be quite contrary. But he was a remarkable individual. The range of his interests, his complete commitment to the Queen and his duty was extraordinary to behold. He was just the best company and one of the best of men.